Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to Mr. Ballin, and this one is top three stories that sound fake but are 100% real, part nine. Again, I don't know what parts I've reacted to, but I just react to these videos as they come. I don't really do them in order. And yeah, that's pretty much it because you don't really need to react to them in order or watch them in order because they're all separate videos. But um, obviously, but yeah, we're going to jump into this. Hopefully you're going to enjoy. Links are in the description to his channel if you want to subscribe to him. I'm sure you all know who he is already, but if you haven't, links will be in the description to his video. Give that a watch for as well if you can, because obviously it would help his channel as well, etc. But um, yeah, we're going to jump into this. Links are in the description to my Patreon if you want to see some more videos of mine. And let's just see some of these crazy stories. Sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. And today I'm going to share three stories that demonstrate that. But before we get into today's stories, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right channel because that's all we do and we upload three or four times every week. So if that's of interest to you, please offer the like button, a bowl of chips, and some guacamole, but replace the guacamole with wasabi. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's stories. What's happening there then? So full disclosure, this is not my personal story, but in order to do this story justice, it has to be told in the first person. So I am simply an actor. Oh, okay. Damn, was... so he's gonna act it, bro. He's cold, man. He can literally do anything. His storytelling ability is crazy. I've not even watched what he's about to say, but I just... I mean, his storytelling ability is crazy, but the fact that he's now doing this from the point of view of the person, now, nah, he's, he's elite, man. He's gone so clear. What's he at now? Is he nearly at 10 million subscribers? Bro, I don't know how many he was at when I first started watching him, but he is blown up differently. 10 million, probably, what, six months' time? You'd love to see it, man. Once on a U.S. military ship in the wardroom, which is the officer's lounge, when the operations officer came inside. This guy was the definition of not a morning person. He was bleary-eyed, he kind of stumbled in. He was like a zombie holding a bagel. He sits down in front of me, he's barely conscious, and he starts gnawing on his bagel, and I'm sitting with my back to the outboard side of the ship. So that's the outside of the ship behind me, and there's a porthole right next to my head where the sun is coming through, and it's hitting this officer directly on his face. And so the officer's looking up at the sun, he's kind of squinting and blocking the sun from his face, and I'm looking at him expecting him to shift left or right to get out of the path of the sunlight. But instead, this officer slowly reaches for the phone on the wall, he brings it up to his head, and he goes, yeah, bridge, yeah, uh, this is ops, uh, I need you to adjust our path, yeah, one, five, six, yeah, that's about right, okay, all right, all right, bye. After he hangs up with the bridge, I'm watching him and he hasn't moved. He's still just looking at the sunlight blazing in on his face. He's just squinting and looking up at it. And then all of a sudden, this port of sunlight just gradually begins to shift off of him and winds up on the wall right behind him where it stops. By ordering the bridge to change the ship's path just slightly, about 15 degrees, it's enough of a change to reposition the sun from his face. He literally redirected thousands of tons of steel and hundreds of people just because he was too lazy to move left or right. I'm in awe. I can't believe he's just wow. done this. And for a second, I worry that he won't realize how unbelievably brilliant this was. And then as I'm looking at him in between bites, he just looks up at me and smiles and goes back to eating his bagel. <laughs> what the fuck? In November of 2006, <laughs> Nintendo came out with a brand that was so weird, man. That was just a short story. A new gaming console called the Wii, and it was hugely popular and sold out almost completely right away. By the following January, it was still not on shelves in most places around the world, and so people were going crazy, spending unbelievable sums of money to try to get their hands on the system. A Sacramento, California radio station called KDND got a hold of one of these coveted systems and decided they would give it away during an on-air contest. The contest was going to be called Hold your Wii for a Wii. And the premise of this contest was simple. The You've got to hold your Wii for a Wii. That's got to be, so there's got to be some dangers behind that, no? I mean, there's got to be some possibilities of something going wrong. And I assume this might be going wrong as it's on a Mr. Ballin video. Hold your Wii for Contestants a Wii. Contestants will be given lots of water and the person who Oh, so they're specifically given water as well. It's not like just, they're just holding a Wii. They're given loads of water in, in for it as well. Wow. What who held fuck? it the longest, i.e. they didn't urinate, 
would win the prize. Leading up to this contest, the radio station began promoting it really aggressively on air, and lots of people called in with concerns saying that drinking too much water can actually be deadly. But the station brushed these concerns off and said they were aware of them and that all contestants would be signing a waiver, and so ultimately the station was not responsible for what wow. happened. Wow. On the morning of Friday, January 12th, 18 contestants showed up at the KDND radio station and they signed their waivers, although one of the contestants said the waiver only covered publicity issues, not health and safety concerns. One of the contestants was 28-year-old Jennifer Strange, who was a mother of three, and she was trying to win this Wii for her kids. She, oh, along with the no. others, after signing... Oh, this is going to be so sad. This is going to be so sad. Fuck's sake. I mean, that's just one of the people. I'm sure there's many, of the pe many people with the same sort of similar stories trying to win for their children or their brothers or sisters or whatever. their waiver were ushered into this room where they were handed eight ounce water bottles every 15 minutes they would be expected to finish that water bottle and then refill it and do it every 15 minutes and if at any point they didn't completely finish their water bottle in time or if they got up to use the bathroom they would lose the contest the contest started at 6 45 a.m and by 8 a.m., after five bottles had been drank, a number of the contestants began pulling themselves out to use the bathroom. But the radio staff felt like this contest was gonna take a really long time, and so they gave the remaining contestants, that included Jennifer, a larger bottle of water to drink. This seems like a Mr. Beast video, but from years gone by, and a lot more risky. This is something that Mr. Beast would have done if it was 10 years back. What the fuck? From. Over the next several hours, all of the contestants, except for Jennifer and one other, had dropped out because it was just too painful. They and when you're at this point, you're feeling the pain, you're drinking more water, but you're so close now, you're, you're thinking, just one more and I'm through. So it's going to be pushing you to the, like, right to the end. Had to go to the bathroom. Jennifer was heard on air saying it hurt so much, and one of the hosts laughed and said, well, do you need to lay down? And then somebody piped up and said, she can't even walk. And so everybody just kind of laughed and did nothing about it. Around this oh, time, wow. a nurse called into the radio station and very emphatically said what they were doing. This contest was a really bad idea. You're going to get someone killed from water intoxication. Water intoxication is also known as water poisoning. And in a nutshell, what happens is when you drink too much water, the water dilutes your bloodstream. It can cause swelling in your brain and it can lead to coma and or death. The host, after hearing this concern, turned and yelled to the remaining contestants, hey, is anybody dying out there? And then the host just kind of laughed and hung up on the nurse. A little while later, you can hear one of the hosts on air comment on how Jennifer's belly looked really strange. It had become totally distended and bloated, and they said it looked like she was pregnant. At some point, Jennifer and the other remaining contestant began vomiting, but instead of dropping out, they just continued to drink more water. Oh my god, man. Bro, just award them both with the Wii. It's your radio station. You've probably got loads of money. Just award them both, man. Flipping, I'm saying this as if it's going to change anything. But man, like, use common sense from the radio people. Or the presenters or whatever. Water and did not go to the bathroom. But finally, it became too much for Jennifer to bear, and she dropped out of the contest, and she relieved herself. For coming in second place, she received tickets to a Justin Timberlake concert. On her drive home, Jennifer began experiencing this horrific headache to the point where she was just sobbing uncontrollably. Through tears, she called one of her coworkers and said she just was not going to be able to come into work that day. Her head hurt too much. And so after she hung up, her coworker she had just spoken to was really concerned about her and called Jennifer's mother to let her know what was going on. And about an hour later, Jennifer's mother headed over to Jennifer's house to check on her, and she found Jennifer dead in her bathroom from water poisoning. Oh the my god. The station was ultimately sued by Jennifer's family, and they were ordered to pay over $16 million. Fuck me, man. Fuck those presenters, bro. They stink of absolute shit. The, just honestly the fact that they were like joking about it and stuff as well they won't seem to actually care oh man that's horrible damages in 2005 57 year old steven slevin was a physically healthy man but mentally he was struggling he was depressed and felt like his life didn't have any purpose anymore. And so in August of that year, he decided to just go on a road trip. He didn't know where he was going. He just felt like if I get out on the road and just go driving somewhere, I will feel better. And on this road Fair trip, enough. he eventually began drinking alcohol. And before long, he was swerving along the New Mexico highway. Oh, no. And a police officer saw his erratic driving and pulled him over. Once Stephen failed his sobriety test, the police officer arrested him. 
Stephen was brought to a local detention center where during his booking process, it was discovered that he had a history of mental illness. And so the officers following that county's policy segregated him from the rest of the general population in an effort to protect Stephen from himself. They moved him into a padded cell on the first floor, they removed all of his clothing, and they put him in what's called a suicide smock, which looks like a big blanket wrapped around your upper body. And what it does is it keeps inmates warm and modest, but it also prevents them from balling up their clothes and creating a noose that could hurt themselves with. After a few days in this padded cell, Stephen was moved to another better cell that had a window, it had a shower, it had a toilet, and he was there for two weeks under strict medical observation. But at the end of those two weeks, for reasons that are not entirely clear, Stephen, this mentally unstable man, was moved into solitary confinement to await trial for his DWI. Solitary confinement is a type of imprisonment where the inmate is... How do they think this is going to help someone with mental problems? This is probably the worst thing you can do to someone with dealing with mental problems, you know, like what the hell? ...into a single person cell, and they are kept there nearly around the clock without any significant interaction with other people or other inmates. The psychological effects of solitary confinement are well documented and terrifying. Just 15 days into solitary can be enough to cause permanent psychological damage. Holy shit. Steven's first few weeks in solitary were actually okay. He was allowed to write to his family, he was able to detox and reflect on his life. During those first few weeks, it was noted that Stephen was very polite in his very limited interaction with the officers that were dropping food off through the slot in his door. Also, when Stephen had a few minor medical issues, instead of throwing a fit, he just knocked on the inside of his door and waited patiently for someone to acknowledge him, which took a long time, but he never got frustrated or mad. But by January of 2006, so roughly three months into his solitary- He was there for- f Huh? Three months in solitary confinement. Stint, Stephen had not had any updates on when his case was going to go to trial, and Stephen was starting to lose his grip on reality. That's he was having disgrace. these severe panic attacks, and he was suffering from intense hallucinations. He desperately wanted to find out how much longer he was going to be kept in the cell, but nobody would tell him. He tried writing his letters to his family, asking for help or asking them to try to get an update on his case. But when he went to literally write the letter, his hand shook so severely from the stress and anxiety that he literally couldn't write these letters. Starting that January, Stephen began spending the bulk of his day in the corner of his cell with his knees tucked up to his chest, rocking back and forth. He was allowed out of his cell a few times a month, but in a few times a month. Oh my God. April of that year, that stopped and he almost never left his cell again. And without leaving his cell, Stephen was unable to bathe. And so his skin began developing fungus and began falling off and his teeth began to rot. For drunk driving? Why has this happened for drunk how long ago was this? Because the picture of him was in colour, so I'm assuming it wasn't that long ago. Finally, on May 8th, 2007. 2007. So it was, what, 15, 16 years ago? Wow. And so one year and eight months of being in... Oh, fucking hell. One year and eight months of just being stuck in a room. You've already had mental problems before. If, even if you haven't hadn't, ha if you even if you hadn't had mental problems before, you're gonna be sure to have been completely destroyed after this. And what's going to happen now? Is he going to finally be let out after all of this, or is something now going to happen? In solitary confinement, Stephen was transferred out of his cell to a behavioral institute in Las Vegas, Nevada. After bathing and shaving and cutting his hair and receiving proper medical treatment, he was back to his normal self within a couple of days. And while he was there, he had a chance to speak to a lawyer, and the lawyer would say, the entire meeting, Stephen was just saying, where have I been? And the lawyer said, you know, you've been in solitary confinement awaiting trial. You've been there for almost two years. Disgrace. And to that, Stephen was shocked and literally didn't believe him. He actually couldn't remember that time in his life. It was like it had driven him crazy and he had completely repressed it from his memory. But when the lawyer told him about it, it began to come back into his mind and he begged the lawyer to not let them send him back to solitary confinement. 
And his lawyer said, unfortunately, if that's where they're gonna keep you, that's where they're gonna keep you until you have your trial for this DWI. And unfortunately, we have no idea when that trial is going to be. Oh but stay God. strong because it's bound to be soon if they've already transferred you to this institute. Steven stayed at this institute for two weeks. And during that time, he asked constantly about when his trial was gonna happen, but nobody knew. And at the end of those two weeks, Stephen was abruptly taken out of his room, put in a van, driven back to New Mexico, and put back into his solitary confinement cell. And immediately, Stephen began to deteriorate. And he begged the guards to not put him in the cell, but nobody was listening, and before long, the door had shut, and he was all alone again. Within a couple of days, Stephen developed an abscess in one of his teeth, and he tried to get medical attention, but he didn't get it, and so he sat in the corner of his cell, and for eight hours one day, he rocked back and forth, and violently twisted and yanked and pulled on that tooth until he was able to rip it out of his head. Almost two months later, on June 22nd, 2007, Stephen's case was finally put before a judge, and the judge dismissed all of the charges. It's believed the judge found out about this horrible mistreatment of Stephen. Nah, this has actually pissed me off so much, man. Just imagine that for fucking... I mean, of course, what he's done, maybe you should get a week in jail. Maybe not, maybe not even that. Just some sort of fine or something and then if you do it again maybe a bit more of a sentence and then if it builds up then maybe have a few months in prison if you can't con if you can't stop yourself and ban them from driving and do this and do that why are you keeping a man in solitary confinement for two years like that is just actually insane it's pissed me off this one and took pity on him but we'll never know three days later Stephen was released from jail and reunited with his family he had been in solitary confinement for two years without so much as a hearing to tell him what was going on he had essentially been forgotten about he would go on to sue the county and win 15.5 million dollars in damages however uh, at the same uh, time he's winning this case he was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer and given less than a year to live it's unclear if he is alive today. So that's going to do it, guys. If you found the secret in today's episode, let me That is actually so dark, man. That last story pissed me off so much. Stories like the last one terrify me the most. No monster, no aliens, no serial killers, just straight up human malfeasance that ruined someone's life. The last story is just jaw dropping. I can't even imagine the horrors that Stephen went through, ripping a tooth from your own head that's just sickening sickening humans demeaning other humans just because they can yeah everyone's just talking about the last story man that last story really pissed me off man fuck me that could literally be anyone that is just so sad but yeah this is this reaction if you want more mr ball then let me know in the comments and yeah until next time peace